we've got some important breaks today to look at, and I've got the charts ready to run and preloaded. So let's jump into this Halloween chart fiesta. Okay, first item, the spider. These trend lines are powerful. They show you what's coming. And we had two days of warning before uh, before it just let loose. Um, it's interesting, too, because take note of this dashed line. That's the midline of this literally decade-plus channel, the just enormous channel. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where we're finding support right now. It's almost magical to me. So it's terrific that we failed this line. That's great news. Next goal, let's break that midline. Then things get really saucy. We'll just put a new marker there to, uh, to note that gap that's taken place. So trend line, dead. I don't trade overseas markets, but the uh, the CAC 40, which I mentioned from time to time, is getting closer and closer and closer to just an outright failure. This is the F40 futures, and I would note, you know, to be you know, full disclosure, that the past uh, monster tops didn't amount to squat. Um, this one did back um, pre-COVID. That was a big, big reversal. But this didn't amount to anything. This didn't amount to anything. Maybe this won't amount to anything either. But it's still worth tracking uh, just to see. Now, we are in the uh, the thick of earnings season, but also getting near the tail end of the good stuff. I, I get very wistful when, when Apple comes around because that's kind of it. It gets pretty dull after that. Um, tonight's probably like the, the high watermark of, of earnings excitement. Um, because we have Apple and Amazon. Last night, we had Microsoft and Meta. But at last I checked, both were down pretty hard. So here's Microsoft, and we have gapped down hard on this. I've moved this line down to take that into account, that price gap. At first, when they announced uh, the stock went up, it, it wasn't magnificent, but it was up a few dollars. It looked like a good, strong reaction. And then I suppose from the comments call, it just absolutely fell to pieces. So we are down over 5%, which is part of the reason that the NQ is down hundreds of points right now. So this is taking a hard fall, uh, as is Meta, down over 4% uh, off almost $25. You know, it's not that big a deal because all we've done is just undo about a week's worth of price gains. You know, like the joke goes, these are prices not seen since the 24th of October. I mean, it's such not a big deal. Um, but um, hey, at least we don't have lifetime highs to contend with. So that's that's interesting how, how that unwound so hard. But, you know, these trend lines demand constant observation. As we look at the NQ here, you can see here a little more tap, tap, tapping going on. Maybe between Amazon and Apple, we will, as with the spider, stop tapping and just fall. Um, we will leave this green for now, but this is a little bit of a warning sign that there could be something else coming around the corner because not only is there Apple and Amazon tonight, but there's a jobs report tomorrow as the Fed continues their kabuki theater pretending that they can control the entire economy and the business cycle, you know, of a, of a $20 trillion economy. So, uh, yeah, guys. Anyway, as I said, the ES, there's just no debate about it. It's just absolutely collapsed through that trend line. Uh, this is a medium term trend line. And it's interesting, too, because quite obviously, you know, everyone's obsessed with the election and rightly so. But the narrative is absolutely ubiquitous, uniform, and it is as follows. Um, one, Trump will win. It seems that's going to be the case. And two, on the heels of that, the market will go blasting higher to levels never seen before. That one I'm not so sure about because we all know that the market loves to fool people. It loves to go just the opposite way that everybody thinks it's going to go. How odd would it be? How strange it would be for him to win. And sure, the, the futures rally mightily. And then sometime that night, they just stop and start plunging. I'm not saying it'll happen. I'm certainly not counting on it happening. But if the market really wants to confuse people, take the assumption that every single person on the planet is making and go the other way. So we shall see soon. Um, all right. What next? Some other earnings from lesser known companies are moving the markets. Here's Lemonade, uh, which uh, honestly, as memory serves, up here, it was more valuable than IBM. Uh, honestly, it seems crazy, but it's true. Back in early 2020, it was more valuable than IBM. I still have no idea what these people do. Big rally on this, but it doesn't change a thing. I mean, it, look what it's done for years. Down, up, down, up. It's, it's like a sine wave. So this is just the latest up. I don't think it changes a thing on that. Uh, Roblox, kind of the same idea. There's a lot of rather scandalous accusations about these folks, but the report is exciting people. It's up over 20%, but this is a range-bound critter. 
this has been in this range for um well about three years now yeah almost three solid years and it's at the top of the range now so that might be an opportunity uh if you think that um you know it's kind of shot its wad at these levels so uh yeah because there's a there, yeah I'm, i won't get into it but just google roblox scandal and you know you can read it speaking of scandals uh here's super micro smci down hard again in march standard poor's sent out a breathless uh press release about the new entrance into the s&p 500 and um this was one of them super micro i think i want to say they announced it on the first of march and it happened on the 8th of march something like that um since roughly that time, it's lost 80% of its value. 80% in a market which is, let's all agree, a little bit supported by as much help as possible and has been basically making lifetime highs almost every day. So quite, quite the catastrophe. But yeah, they added when it was doing that. They added it. And you can see a tidal wave of bullish articles around that time, and understandably so, because the stock was doing nothing but go up. But it, it's just one of those classic, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news kinds of things. If one had been bold enough upon the entry of the SP 500 to see that, you know, well, that's that, it would have taken a few days of pain because there's a little bit of lift left, but that lift left. So, yeah, um, quite, quite the story there. Uh, Dell, which bounced yesterday much higher thanks to SMCI, has completely unwound all of that. Um, this was where we were on Tuesday. The SMCI uh, news broke that their auditor had like put on their tennis shoes and went running for the exit door. So the logic was, ooh, Dell's going to own this market. It's going to be like a monopoly. And people bid this thing up to about 134. All of yesterday's gains and at today's low, all the gains from the pop are gone. So yeah, the, it's one hit wonder, one day wonder, one really has to wonder. So here's AMD. This is still supported by the trend line, although it's still moving down about 3%. Trend line by trend line, any breaks will continue to contribute to the uh, diminishment of, of the tech stocks. NVIDIA is still stalled out. The uh, the lifetime high was very recent, just on the 22nd. But since then, blip, 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 a little lower and a little lower high and a little lower low every day. Um, and it's going to be many weeks before the earnings come out. But here again, trend line, trend line, trend line. These are all key. And this was much longer than the ones I've been talking about. Um, anecdotally, I would also say uh, ARM, ARM Holdings, um, has not only broken its trend line, but it's got a nice gap down today as well. So just tech stuff across the board, all the AI obsession, the AI fad is fading stock by stock. Over in Tesla land, this is also sinking. The Fibonacci's are doing a yeoman's job of holding prices back. And over the course of time, these lifts are getting a little more modest each time. You can see very subtly, you know, here it was up to 310. Here it got up to 300, a little lower, a little lower, a little lower. The peak this time, a few days ago, was at 273.54. And we're a good $24 under that now. It's all up, see this trio right here? These three lines all tightly clustered together. And that is the none shall pass area, just time after time after time. It gets there, maybe a little above, and then it's smack back down. So um, I look to this gap way down here at this trio uh, as major support. It could still have room to fall, especially if we get a surprise uh, late Tuesday night. Incidentally, uh, one of Tesla's competitors is basically a death store. Now here's GOEV, which on a reverse split adjusted basis has gone from up almost $600 to 75 cents. So um, yeah, not doing so well. An incredible ski slope on that, just jaw dropping stuff. Um, my disposition toward precious metals is unchanged, which is long term, you know, wild bull and short term, very cautious person hiding in the corner waiting for better prices. GLD is reversing gold itself. The front month's down $42 and the election is too big of a binary event for me to, to really get involved. Um, silver, which is kind of my medal of choice, is down quite hard. The front month is down three and a half percent. SLV is approaching an important price gap here. But gold is so high. Gold has added about $1,000 per ounce in the past year. And it's just, if, if gold lost another, say, $200, the damage to silver would be so pronounced that that gap ain't going to mean nothing. So, yeah, I'm staying far away. Here's silver itself. To my eyes, if some kind of election shocker comes about and just pounds, pounds, pounds this to what seems like a really important support level, okay, then let's give that a shot. But I'm not doing anything before or during. Got to wait till after as far as I'm concerned. Um, only obliquely related to precious metals here is uh, Bitcoin, which almost managed um, 
a very, very close, a new high a couple of days ago on the 29th, but it's retreated from that. And once again, this is going to be very dependent upon what happens with the election. There are some financial assets that are tethered to the waste, to, to the results. Tesla, silver, gold, Palantir, uh, DJT, you know, on and on it goes. And certainly Bitcoin. Oh, speaking of DJT, this one, a uh, hard reversal on this. Um, we peaked on this a couple of days ago. We were about $55. Today, it got as low as $33. So about a, what, 40% drop from stem to stern. Um, so I'm not sure what prompted that. Maybe just some judicious uh, profit taking um, in advance of the uh, in the election. Here's some just sort of obscure charts just for your any bears out there to think about. A little, little harder to trade, but interesting charts nonetheless. Here's Pornado, BNO. Uh, Archer Daniels Midland, ADM, breaking below that cute little head and shoulders and also an analog right there, those two pink zones there. Here is a beauty. Remember this one, Carter's? It's my egg-shaped item here. This one... Um, went pushing up toward the the shell so to speak of that and has just plunged ever since so that was a cool little phenomenon let's make that a little more a little more beautiful like so um gutless gtls chart industries um good history of falling below rounded tops and it looks like we've got another one and movado group uh falling nicely under its broken and complete right triangle pattern so all kinds of good charts out there right now but it's all going to flow to the cubes and although it's not broken on the NQ, on the cubes the damage is done you can see we just leaped across to the other side of that trend line so that's completely broken 